Hello, we're going renegade handheld here. This sprawling mass is the back of my uh, Yamaha PSS 780 keyboard and try to follow on from a video I did about a year ago now where I was discussing the uh, noise that it makes like a constant tinnitus whining on top of a lot of just general electrical noise. Just briefly to recap, um, it makes this noise through the speakers whether the volume control is up or down or whatever it also makes it on any audio output you use whether the line outs the headphone out so if you try and record something with this especially if you use a lot of compression or high gain or effects or anything like that you end up with this awful whining noise and loads of electrical interference all over uh, the recording that you're doing and um, I've seen people acknowledge this, that it makes this this noise, the 680 and the 780 uh, online, but I haven't ever seen anyone try and tackle the issue. Uh, what's really strange is that the lower models in the series which use the same architecture, uh, so the, the 480, the 580 for example, I've personally used and they don't make the same noise. So now I've actually got some time to do it, um, I thought I'd try and tackle it, try and find out the source of it and see if there's anything that can be done uh, to get a cleaner output that I can use for recording. As I say, this sprawling mass is a bit of an experiment at the minute. Um, long story short, what I'm doing is I've been going around with the scope and uh, a few probe leads and uh, my headphones and zoom recorder trying to trace back the signal from the amp board, uh, amp and power board which is there and uh, I'm trying to go backwards and see if I can get nearer to the uh, DAC chips and the sound chips and see if I can tap off something um, a little bit closer and um, ultimately that was successful uh, at least for the FM synth part but I'll come to that in a second um, the first thing I tried to do and again as I discussed on a previous video this has had a, a previous repair that I did where the socket was smashed off first thing I tried doing was loosening the amp board and lifting it and if you lift it with the power on the whining noise does fade away so at the root of the problem we seem to have an issue with uh, this amp board being too close to the motherboard so the first thing I actually tried was shielding this lump of plastic coated foil <laughs> under here um, I tried making a shield and grounding the shield and putting it between the two boards to see if it would make any difference at all uh, assuming it was radio interference and it didn't make a blind bit of difference no matter where it was the second option I considered was actually removing this board and mounting it externally it's held on by this ribbon connector here and then of course the two speaker wires uh, although this connector has a lot of connections on it uh, when you actually look at it four of them are for ground Two of them are a 5 volt line and uh, the rest is just audio so something like a 6 or 7 pin connector you could do the speakers uh, and the power and audio signals uh, no problem however that would mean this thing being in a separate box and it would be messy it would be awkward to use I'm more in favour of integrating things so um, that's what I'm, I'm aiming to do so as I said I tried uh, tapping further back and trying to identify uh, some of the chips and um, the op amps were a dead giveaway being as there are uh, there's one amp, one op amp on this side next to these two chips and just underneath here there's another op amp next to this chip and both of those if we can see that there we go both of those are custom Yamaha chips it turns out this one is the FM chip for the synthesizer and the Toshiba chip at the side of it is a 8k uh, RAM chip and so this 4558 op amp here is the op amp for the FM side and if you notice I'm not sure if how, how clear it is on here there's a bit of tape over it um, there are surface mount ICs on the other side of the board which are indicated uh, by here um, one here one here and one over the other side. I reckon they're the digital to analog converters. So this comes back to the top of the board and these are the op amps uh, 
off the back of the, the DAC chips. So I found out that if I went round and tapped off a point, um, I got a really um, high output clean signal. But what was really crucial was grounding it as close to the op amp as possible. If I take a ground from uh, like the power board for example, or even the uh, negative side of the speaker, in theory they all share the same ground. In practice there's so much interference going on and there's so many lines going up and down that there's a potential difference. So there was an audible difference with wherever I actually tapped off the ground point and no real surprise that tapping off the ground point as close to the op amp as possible, I even had a clip on the leg of the chip at one point, gives the best results. So what I've got here, this is purely experimental at the moment, um, is a shielded cable with, if I can get that to focus, a shielded cable with a 1UF electrolytic capacitor and inside this heat shrink at the moment there's a 1K resistor. Um, I'm probably going to change the value of that, I'm probably going to drop that down and I think I'm going to involve this little uh, line input, line output transformer board. This is out of a little Chinese uh, ground loop isolator basically and I think I'm going to mount this on the back side if you can see over here of the casing that will go here and I'm going to put a separate socket for the FM output on there and uh, the, the results have been really impressive the, the output is quite hot and I've found that if I put a high value resistor in series with the output um, you actually get more noise I think a big part of the reason is that um, the op amps are only being driven by 5 volts on the positive side there's no negative 5 volts so there's no common mode rejection going on because the, uh, the the negative side is actually just ground so any slight noise or interference you get uh, around the, the 5 volt line or on the or even on the ground line um, makes its way straight into the audio signal so tapping this off uh, has given me a really clean output of uh, FM and yes I've only got one cable because it turns out despite stereo being written on the outside of this thing uh, the FM output is actually mono it's only the PCM percussion that's actually stereo that's actually two discrete channels and the reason it has the uh, stereo chorus button is to give the FM section a kind of thickening effect so this doesn't have the chorus feature on it this is clean out of the synthesizer chip and um, I don't think there's any filters in there either uh, it sounds much brighter, much cleaner um, the headphone output in particular in comparison just sounds like mush so there's a really nice clean sharp output coming from this but there is a 3 volt offset on it so you have to have that capacitor in there so I'm tweaking the values and, and things of what I've got connected to this at the moment and um, I thought about putting maybe a trimmer pot on the outside but if it's on the back I'm thinking it's, you know, it's likely to get snapped off maybe so trying to get a, a comfortable medium that will be suitable for what I want and then I'll do a follow up video the next thing I'm trying as you can see with the clips on at the moment if they'll show up um, is the drum section, the PCM drum section um, I have found a couple of outputs on that but they're incredibly noisy and it's difficult to actually find uh, isolated outputs as in um, not mixed in with the FM I've got a couple of points there for the stereo outputs but they're quite low level and they're really noisy so um, I'm trying to do the same sort of experiments that I've done with the FM side to see if I can get a discrete drum output uh, with the same kind of signal to noise ratio as I'm getting from this um, ultimately uh, if that stays in place it will still wind through the speakers and doing this this way won't actually kill the headphone output, the speaker output or the general line outputs. I did try tacking this wire uh, down to this uh, socket here to see if I could actually just use the sockets that were in place instead of drilling and fitting other sockets. Um, I, removed a, uh, I removed a link here um, it's actually a little inductor uh, and then tried tapping in and I got terrible noise again from this uh, amp board 
so I was back to square one so this output is definitely better on its own its own socket as near to this end of the board as possible ultimately I think uh, the noise is coming from the LED scanning matrix two chips here uh, two Motorola chips are Darlington arrays and uh, these are the pull down resistors uh, across that matrix I think the noise is ultimately coming from the scanning matrix of those if you hold an unshielded cable close to an LED it squeals like mad and um, scoping out some of the frequencies around it it does seem to tally up I don't know why the other keyboards aren't so affected by that but I have a suspicion that's where that's coming from so another option if possible might be to try and make some sort of lights out switch um, I'm, I'm going to keep poking around with this and see if maybe that's an option but crucially the way I've done this the position of this is making no difference and the amount of noise and ringing uh, you know the tinnitus noise on it is extremely low compared to the, the signal so it's going to be much better for a recording output so I'm going to keep experimenting with this and uh, again see if I can sort out the drum section see if I can do a less prototype job of this finish this off and I'm going to leave loads of flex on this as well because this is shielded this is having no problem with the amount of cable or uh, whereabouts it hangs on this side of the board um, but I'm going to fit this properly most likely with that transformer experiment with a few resistors and such to get a, a value an output value that I'm happy with and uh, we'll see where we can get to next time Cheers.